Hey there, welcome back to the At Home Dive YouTube channel. As always, my name's Joey, and today we're in the kitchen making something fantastic. As we all know, St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner, and this year, we need to make it special. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make Irish soda bread, one of the most simple, easy, traditional breads that you'll ever make, and don't worry, it doesn't even have yeast in it, so there's gonna be no trouble ahead of you. So sit back, hit that subscribe button, and let's dive right in. So today on the counter we have a pretty simple list of ingredients we'll run over real fast and I'll go ahead and point out that today I'm going to be using Kerrygold Irish butter. This isn't totally necessary because it is a little bit expensive but it's really good butter and it's really going to shine through today in our recipe and as you can see here this butter has a nice yellow tint to it as opposed to like the creamy off-white color or white color that butter usually has. So today we're going to be using four tablespoons of the Kerrygold salted Irish butter, four cups of AP flour here in the bowl and I went ahead and have my canister on the counter with a spoon in it because we're going to be using a little bit more as we go. We may need some to thicken the dough up a little bit, but we're definitely going to use some to roll the dough in before we bake it. One egg. This is at room temperature. It's been sitting out for a little while. One teaspoon of baking soda for the soda bread. And I've got one teaspoon of iodized salt, one tablespoon of granulated white sugar, two tablespoons of lemon juice, and 13 ounces of whole milk. I also went ahead and grabbed a fork and a wooden spoon. And this is all we're really going to need today. I did go ahead and preheat my oven to 425 degrees so that it'll be ready when we are and I went ahead and lined our baking tray that we're gonna be using today but let's get started I'm gonna go ahead and consolidate a few of these things and give ourselves more room to work with so I'm gonna start by putting the lemon juice right in with the milk that's gonna give it that tanginess that we're gonna look for kind of similar to a buttermilk a quick stir and I can set this off to the side now I'm gonna go ahead and take my salt my soda and my sugar and drop it right into the flour Go ahead and take the diced butter and add it into the flour mixture. This is going to be pretty similar like when we make pie dough or even biscuits. Essentially, we want to coat the butter with flour and then work it in, smashing it between our fingers and getting it fully incorporated into the flour. Now that the butter is fully incorporated, we're going to take our egg and lightly beat it with a fork to make sure it's nice and smooth. Now I'm simply gonna go ahead and just make a light well right in the middle of our flour. We're gonna go ahead and pour the egg right in and I'm gonna use my spoon or your spatula to go ahead and rake down to make sure we get all the excess egg out of the bowl. Now we're gonna pour the milk mixture right into the center of the well also. And we're gonna to start to fold the dough together. We're looking for a nice shaggy dough and we wanna make sure we don't overwork it. Although this may take a couple of minutes to work together. Your dough may look pretty wet and soggy at this point. And if so, that's all right. Because as we mentioned, we do have our canister of flour here. And I'm gonna go ahead and start dropping in a couple of spoons of flour. This may get a little bit messy, but we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with two spoons of flour and slowly add a little bit more, up to a half cup as needed, in order just to get the dough to come back together. Keep in mind not overworking it as you try to incorporate all the flour. Once your dough starts to thicken up a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and coat our hands really well with flour. That's gonna allow us to go ahead and rake off the excess from the spoon and start working the dough by hand. It may get a little tacky and it'll definitely get a little bit messy. So just take your time and slowly work the dough together. Okay, so now that we've worked the dough quite a bit, we're getting it to where we can actually handle it. It is still a little bit sticky, but it's not overwhelmingly hard to work with. So now I'm just gonna take a little bit of this excess flour that I have in the bowl and just coat it a little bit and toss it around in my hands to give it a nice coated texture. And then I'm gonna place it right onto the tray I'm gonna bake it on. Now I'm gonna cut a shallow X all the way across the top, one corner to the other. And I'm gonna go into my 425 degree preheated oven for 35 minutes or until it sounds hollow when you thump it on the bottom. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, so we are back and we have our beautiful loaf of bread here. It just came out of the oven. So we do not want to cut it yet. I'm gonna let it sit on the pan for about five minutes and then I'm gonna transfer it over to a cooling rack. Five minutes later. Now that this has cooled off a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and just pick it up, dust all the excess flour off of it, if there is any, 
and set it right onto a cooling rack. It's still warm to the touch and it's not ready to cut yet because we wanna make sure that it's totally cooled all the way through before we cut it. That way it doesn't get sticky on the inside. So now we gotta wait quite a while. One eternity later. All right, so it's been quite a while now and the bread's had time to cool. I'm gonna go ahead, drop this over onto a cutting board and we're gonna see what it looks like on the inside. I'm just gonna cut it right down the middle. It has a nice firm exterior and on the inside it should be a nice, dense, but soft bread. And as you can see here, it looks fantastic. Let's go ahead and cut a piece off and see how it tastes. All right, just as we expected, a nice firm exterior and a soft buttery rich interior and the easiest bread that you'll ever make. That wraps us up on how to make Irish soda bread. Comment below and let me know how yours turns out. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe. Have a happy and safe St. Patty's Day.